Welcome, everybody. My name is Martin Rosley. I'm professor for environmental epidemiology at the Swiss Tropical and Public Health Institute. In the next few minutes, I will give a lecture about children and mobile technology. So we will address different aspects of mobile phone technology and its effect like electromagnetic fields or addiction or other problematic aspects of e-media use. I will use data from two studies that we have conducted, one in Switzerland and one in South Africa. Both have been conducted in adolescents. Many more studies have already shown cross-sectional association between obesity and e-media use or inattention, fatigue, myopia, depression or headache. But it's always difficult with cross-sectional associations. We do not know what is the hen and what is the egg. So does obesity make people using e-media differently or has e-media use an effect on the fatigue of adolescents? So that is something we wanted to explore in a study in Switzerland. This was the so-called Hermes study, health effects related to mobile phone use in adolescents. Hermes is the god of communication and the god of trade. So we thought it fits very well to a mobile phone study. And usually you see these pictures of Hermes carrying something in the head. And nowadays we know this must be a smartphone. And the main question and the main idea behind this study was to explore whether exposure from either electromagnetic field exposure from mobile phone or whether mobile phone use per se is affecting the behavior of adolescents, cognitive functions or health disturbance like headache or sleep disturbances. This is a longitudinal study, a prospective cohort study. It consisted out of two separate sub-studies. Both had a baseline, the first study in 2012, the other one in 2014. And a year later, the same students were examined again. Students were seventh to eighth grade, so most of them were between 13 and 14 years at the date of recruitment. And we have done several surveys. They ask about mobile phone use and general media use, about social and demographic factors, and had questionnaire and computerized memory testing. We also did a lot of exposure assessment, including modeling and obtaining operated data from these adolescents to have objective data on how much they use their mobile phone. And also the parents filled in a survey where we got additional relevant information for our data analysis. But let us first talk about electromagnetic fields. What type of exposure are we dealing with? So mobile phones emit in the radio frequency, microwave frequency range. So typically this is a few hundred megahertz up to a few gigahertz that is used for this type of communication. And it's well known that this type of microwave radiation has a heating effect. This is well investigated and is taken into account in the regulatory limits. So as long as you are below the regulatory limits, such heating effects have, will not occur uh, at a dangerous level. You also have other electromagnetic fields like extremely low frequency fields. This is related to use of currency. We have infrared, uh, which makes um, also warming. And then we have the visible light, the ultraviolet, and of course the ionizing radiation, which is known to cause cancer. For instance, the X-ray used for medical diagnostics. So it's important to realize that absorption depends on the frequency and the size. So we see that very clearly in, in the old type of antenna that has used different size to um, receive the different TV programs that were transmitted on slightly different frequency. 
And we can also see that in children, that the absorption frequency is slightly different for children than for adults. But in general, it's still relatively similar. So you wouldn't expect completely different um, absorptions. So here you see a brain, a cross section of a brain. And what is clear, mobile phone radiation penetrates to some extent into the brain. And obviously the smaller the brain, so the smaller the child, the relative depth is higher that the, is achieved by this type of radiation. So if you look into the inner part of the brain, then children will be exposed to higher levels like than adults. In our study, we looked what is the most relevant source in daily life and we calculated the cumulative brain dose of our study participants and also the whole body dose, so what is absorbed by the whole body. And what we see, the most important factors for the brain dose are calls by the mobile phones, although our study participants did not talk a lot on the phones, a few minutes a day, not more. And the second important part are decked phones, so these are cordless phones. Both together contribute 94% of the cumulative absorbed radiation of the brain. Here on the right side of this very um, slight line, you can so see the so-called far field or environmental sources like radio tower or downlink is considered to be mobile phone base station towers. Um, and you see only 6% of the absorbed radiation originates from this type of sources. And even if you go to the whole body, then maybe calling by a mobile phone or cordless phone is not that important anymore. But then the students, these adolescents used mobile phones a lot for data transmission, for surfing, browsing the internet. And so still 91% of the absorbed radiation comes from the own device, whereas only 9% are from environmental sources. Another important aspect to consider when we talk about children and mobile technology is the developing brain. And the brain is developing quite long. So you see here, even in the age of 12 to 16, the brain is reorganized. There are still developments. So there's some concern that then children still can be affected by mobile technology use, be it the physical radiation or be it just the content of what they consume and how they consume um, their, the content. In our study, we have used a clustering method, a latent class analysis, to differentiate between different user types. So we had in yellow, the gamers. So they use mostly mobile devices, e-media devices for playing games. Then we had the medium users in green. So they use everything a little bit. Then those who low use, who do very little calls on the mobile phone, but still do text message and, and so on. And then we have this, uh, Students, they have a call preference, so they use mobile phones mostly for calling, but not a lot of other activities. And then high social use um, is in blue, so they use a lot of social network right, like Facebook or Twitter um, uh, on their mobile phone. You wouldn't be surprised that gamers are mostly boys, 99% in our samples, that low use was only prevalent in the first study in 2012 and 2013, whereas a few years later, usage was much higher. Um, the call preference was also mainly in the sample one. After that, smartphones has been more used also for other activities. And high social use is something which is mainly done by girls. What we then have seen in our data analysis, indeed that the cumulative dose to the brain, the physical dose, has an effect on the figural memory. So we found that the figural memory, the development of figural memory over one year was slightly decreased in relation to the EMF dose absorbed by the brain. 
we haven't seen something for verbal memory, there was no association. And this was quite interesting because the figural memory is located on the right side of the brain and more than 80% of our participants use the mobile phone on the right side of the brain. The verbal memory is more on the left side of the brain and so it's not surprising that we could not see it. But we have done a lateral analysis and have indeed seen there was a tendency that right side user had an effect on figural memory only and left side user, user on verbal memory only. So this suggests that indeed um, memory processes could be affected by high dose of electromagnetic fields that can occur if a mobile phone has a low connection quality and transmit with maximum power. We also looked into health related quality of life and there it was quite clear and this is a cross-sectional analysis low use was related with green squares so with positive health related quality of life you can see different um, different dimensions physical well-being psychological well-being moods and emissions and so on and if you here see a red so this means that they have lowest score uh, here so that the social support on peers so there might be actually a disadvantage in adolescents if they are not using their mobile phone a lot they may have less support on the other hand those who have a high social use so it's not the call preference they have the highest exposure from mobile phones highest radiation exposure high social use does not necessarily mean high radiation exposure because when surfing the mobile phone is far away from the body but those activities are related to uh, less well scoring on different aspects of health related quality of life and basically the same pattern has seen in a study that we did in south africa in the western cape region uh, within the bilateral chair of global and environmental health um, again, we saw that medium use was not really related to uh, low symptoms, but high use had higher sleep disturbance call. And most important, those who reported that they are regularly woken up during night to their own mobile phone, that those had a much higher sleep disturbance score and also more problems with headache so they had more often headache when we looked into the cognitive test we actually saw that um, there was a rather an improvement in relation to mobile phone use mostly in moderate e-media users less so in heavy users so this indicates um, that maybe a bit of mobile phone use is beneficial as you train yourself as you get access to your information so it can be useful for the education of adolescents so our conclusion were that our findings imply that with regard to the education of adolescents a vigilant balance is needed to profit from the beneficial effects of moderate e-media use on cognition while preventing the negative side effects for health related quality of life sleep disturbance and headache severity very very briefly as, as a last slide um, if we have so much exposure to the head that is the reason why there's also concern that children may obtain a brain tumor from mobile phone use so far there's very little research on that there's only one multi-center case control study that we have done together with Danish, Swedish and Norwegian researcher. And based on that, we could not find an increased brain tumor risk in our sample. And this was consistent with incident rate trying trend analysis. You would expect that nowadays most of adolescents use a mobile phone. So if it were a strong risk, then basically the incidence of brain tumor should have increased but this was not the case indicating that if there's a risk it must be a small risk maybe related to sub type of tumors but it cannot be uh, a big risk it's very in interesting that this type of time trend analysis are usually very 
weak epidemiological study design. But for these specific questions where we have a strong increase in exposure, basically no strong other risk factor except ionizing radiation for brain tumors and very good cancer registries in many countries, this is actually considered to be a very useful tool to see and monitor whether childhood, childhood brain tumors are related to increasing e-media use. So to summarize, it's very tricky and we cannot finally solve. E-media use may have direct effect on EMF, on cognitive function, behavior and symptoms, but this may also be because of content distraction and it, we also have to consider reverse causality. For instance, and here we have some evidence from our study that adolescents with behavioral problems tend to use e-media more often than those without such problem. And last but not least, latent variables or confounding is also important. So we found also some indication that moderate e-media use is related to a better educational style of the parent, more supportive. Um, so that might be the reason why moderate e-media e use has also some beneficial effect on cognitive function. So to summarize, most relevant electromagnetic field sources are devices that are operating close to the body, so usually their own mobile phone. Consistent cross-sectional association has been observed for symptoms and behavior, but not cognitive functions, but they are not really pronounced in longitudinal analysis and in objective recorded data from the mobile phone operator. So this suggests that associations with symptoms and behaviors are more likely um, reverse causality. The pattern is complex and probably e-media use can amplify existing problems. So if adolescents tend to be addictive, they may be addicted, addicted to e-media use and this may cause problems in the long run for their health related quality of life or for their behavior. In particle problematic is nighttime use, and this has really to be uh, educated. The adolescents said this can be avoided. And these effects were much stronger than what we have seen for one specific outcome in our study on memory, which was a relative small effect. So we can conclude that non-radiation effects of e-medium are most likely more relevant than potential effects from electromagnetic fields.